Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amilas and I do nursing videos, vlogs, challenges, etc. And if you've been here from day one, walk one people big up yourself. Now, as you can tell by the title, you know what I'll be getting myself into, you know what I'll be talking about, you know what I'll be discussing. Now, before I get into the video, there are a few things that I need to clear up. One, I am on semester break, so I am in my second home. And if you've been on this journey with me, you know that I'm talking about Portland. So, if you hear a bike, many of our outside people, so if you want to hear a bike, if you want to hear a dog, a post cat, especially foul, just bear that in mind. I'll try to mute my background a bit, but yeah. So, second thing also, for those who have been with me for a while, I'm asking you guys to just check your subscription and see if you're still subscribed to me. Um... I lost over 400 subscribers the other day due to some technicalities. I don't know if it was when I used to do sub for sub or when, you know, a person subscribed before watching my videos. I don't know what it was, but I lost over 400 subscribers and I'm currently 50 subscribers away from 1K and I need to get back there just to maintain that little 1K next day <laughs> because my views are there and my videos are... um about that 1k and above so just check if you're still subscribed and if not just subscribe again um it's really youtube is really subs it's youtube yeah so that um so last thing i want to mention before getting into the video is that i want to do a shout out to a youtube channel and this person is from the university of west indies so i know that a lot of person watching this not necessarily want to go to utec so i really want to give her a shout out her name is it's it's brie it's brit i'll leave her name here and the description down below she's starting a nursing series so if you have any questions or anything about yui we'll be doing a collab very soon also so you can check her out i think i've cleaned up everything um, yes, I've been missing for a month. I've been doing monthly videos because, listen people, I'm just coming off a 15 weeks practicum. So, yeah, I took the time to just, I'm working here. I'm going to get all the funds. we go back to school. And yeah, now the sister semester is coming up. And I know that a lot of you guys, year one and two, you guys are going on practicum. I decided to do a video. So, yeah. Now what is practicum and what does that have to do with you and for those who are not yet into nursing school i'm sure you are curious about practicum and all of that right so you do school you have your theory and then you do a little practice in labs and so on but practicum is when you get real life experience this, this is when you go out into the hospital or the clinic or wherever it is to get real life experience um it's coming from nursing council where they give you a stipulated amount of hours to complete i don't remember year one or two hours like my brain messed up I don't remember um i'm sure your teachers and clinical coordinators would have told you the amount of hours you need but that is coming from nursing council and it's basically you going to the hospital going to the wards practicing skills that you have been taught depending on the level you are at you you are given a exam at the end and yeah it's basically the practical side of it the majority of the time it's done in the summer so how i'll be doing this is breaking it down in two i'll be sharing my experience and then giving you tips and all that so before I share my experience, these are I made a list of things that I could remember. Hunt made a list of things that I could remember that you need for practicum. So if you see me looking down, that's what it is. So for practicum people, ladies and gentlemen, you will need like two books. Um, this is not mandatory. Whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat. But I find this really helpful. You need a little little notebook for when you're actually you know walking around and you want to make certain jottings you know, maybe you're doing vital signs you want to write down you know why a big big book but then your big book is to write your objectives down and whatever you've learned and whatever research you've done you write it in your big book so two books right um you also need apron get as much as possible i when i started nursing school i only had one i only had one uniform one shoes one everything and 
I made it through so if that's all you have that's all you have but as much as possible seeing that you know it's run out of time and yeah when I have time to wash and all them something there so um I think when you came into nursing school you got a paper showing you the outline so right you need an apron ensure that it's longer than a uniform right about the same size as a uniform to just avoid problems so you need a hat a nurse's hat I think I'll, I'll insert a picture of what mine looks like or me in my uniform my full attire um your white shoes and your white stocking well you don't have to be white stocking because what if you can't afford white stocking the same price though <laughs> I mean you know that you're allowed skin tone but just to prevent any confrontation stick to the whites um you're gonna need masks as you can imagine why get your own mask um yeah and um, you're gonna need a nurse's watch especially for first and first years because you're gonna be doing vitals like so get a nurse watch i sell some and there are a lot of persons around on instagram that sells you know support your classmates support your friends it's a difficult time rather than got china man no disrespect to them but right you will understand um you're gonna need a name tag or id i didn't i don't know me not have name tag me just i'm not gonna pay for it um you maybe need a stethoscope um if you don't have one don't panic for first year um i mean if you got if you're gonna get the chance to do manual vital bp you're gonna need one if you don't have one right now you can use this year this third semester to try and work on getting one because in second year you're definitely gonna need it um you're gonna need your skills book and tons of pain so if along the video I remember anything else that you need i hope you're taking notes and i'm sure that in your your meeting your lectures or clinical coordinators would have already told you what and what you need so yeah so that's what you need now what is expected you're expected to check the emergency trolley on every shift so if you are a morning shift and you reach here like six seven whatever you reach um the first thing you do you know see the morning whatever you check the emergency trolley now for first year students who are watching this you don't know what that is it's the first time going into you know you will allow you will let the, the nurse know that it's your first time you may be not go to it on your first day get orientated to the ward first and um there's a trolley there so like if anybody could or what we call it crash or somebody are dead basically there's an emergency trolley where you know you look a little clean right so there are different different types of medications drugs on that trolley different type of equipment and there's a list of paper on top of it where you you look if all the medication is there on the list you take it off and all of that this will help you if you do this in your first year this will help you when you're doing pharmacology right and second year is, this is something that you should do as well right <laughs> now what you do you can just take a picture and in the description box below i'll leave a list of some of the drugs if you want to go on practical man just right so yeah i'll leave a list below some things that you can some things that are on the emergency trolley and you can just look them up and so on some of these drugs have two names and right so i did this in my first year i did a lot of things in my first year so it kind of helped me throughout the rest of the practicum so that's one of, that's one of the things that is expected it's expected of you to write your objectives so this is why i say you need two books but whatever floats your boat how i didn't know about objectives when i just got on practicum i was just going and i said good morning i was just waiting for someone to tell me what to do because i was clueless um i i don't i'm not sure i can't recall i think it's in my second year where my clinical instructors told me about objectives and i'm being honest nothing was said to me about it so for those of you who don't know every morning you should write your objectives of basically what you want to do you know the skills that you are going to be tested on for first year you know it's vital signs and history taking and stuff like that i'm not sure if head to toe assessment is in there but catch your practice nonetheless so you know the skills that you are required to do based on your level so you use that to write your objectives so you just head up your book 
and you it starts by saying at the end of my eight hour shift I would like to complete the following and then you write them in bullet format some nurses will let you know that when you're writing objectives use adjectives so perform vital signs check administer medication and stuff like that also in the description box I will for first year and second years I will add like three objectives are examples of objectives you can just copy them up good to go you learn as you go along expected of you you're expected to do vital signs you're expected to fix the bed bed making you're expected to feed the patient you're expected to practice you know you head to, to assessment if you're in second year expect first year I think yes so you're expected to write your care plans do your health history and for first year expected to do a family study and you're expected to ensure that your time sheets are signed and stuff like that so that's a lot of that's a mouthful of stuff so <laughs> um, I'm just gonna walk through with you how it went in my time before I go any further in terms of what you need to know so how it went is that they divided the class into two one set went to the clinical areas and one set went to the hospital and then we switch. Um, so I was placed at type 5 in Montego Bay and at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. At first they wanted to send me to SAV but that's another story. So what I did was, you know, wash my uniform, press, get my things them up and ready. Went there, let everybody know that we are there, and so on. Show them a little objective. That's the first thing they want to see. So at the end of whatever, I would like to be first objective orientated to the world or orientated to the unit, wherever you are. Because you don't know anywhere. You don't know. Even if you know, put that. I'm an easy objective that I would like to be orientated and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, perform vital signs administer medication i would also like to observe so if there's something you want to do but you're not sure you know you want to observe how they do what i was again observe how they do measurings and then something and after that they basically showed us around and placed us with some nurses and stuff like that being a type five it was for the first two weeks it was cool I learned to do um, how to measure persons and you know it's not a digital skill so it's kind of cool to know how to do things like that um, it was mainly going and doing that helping the community health aides with that and then going inside to do vital signs now you're expected to practice manual vital signs but um, blood pressure, but it's kind of difficult. Nobody has time to wait on you to get your stethoscope and feel and feel. So there's a digital thing there. So that's what I did. After the first week, I was annoyed. There wasn't much to do. I basically go there every day to stand in a corner and put the cuff on someone. You know, in first year, it's a bit tedious because you're not, you cannot write notes. You cannot administer medication. Only thing new that I did there was blood sugar testing and I practiced how to basically stick people. So yes, that was the only excited part of it. But yeah. Other than that, um, we did uh, public um, education. So while the, the patients were in the waiting area, my colleagues and I, we, we selected a topic and we went ahead with our diabetes or something like that and we did a little educational talk and, and get that little sign off because it's, it's in your skills book i think right and other than that we reached out to the community health aides and let them know that hey we have a family study to do your lectures or your clinical instructors must have told you about that so in year one when you're in the clinic there's a family study that you need to do and what we did for what a family study is basically finding a family that is in need you identify the need that they have and you basically help them to you know yeah better themselves so the persons that the person that i got the family that i had they had a young baby and two other um, younger siblings 
and I think one parent was unemployed and one had high blood pressure so you can see that's a whole lot of needs there the pressure the unemployment plus the young baby and all of that limited food clothes and equipment so what we did we went to food for the poor we advocated for the the girl to go into heart and stuff like that you can do so much and no more people do not break your back do not break your back it is good that you make a change yes but right and that's all I did in the clinical area I do hope that it's different for you oh we went because the clinic is type 5 clinic so they do it's kind of um, large scale so they do a lot of different different stuff so there was a day when the midwives were there and the midwife students you're gonna enjoy this <laughs> But you know, as an RN student, it was really fascinating. As my, myself, we saw when you know you wear the baby, we see a little development, developmental care. We saw a pop smear. I should do a pop smear story. Ouch. <laughs> anyway, so and stuff like that. But other than that, it was really just going there every day, like a robot. Going, showing our objectives, signing the paper, doing what we're doing, vital signs and all that every day until the hours just finish. What we did though that was really excited or the most fun feel part of the clinical experience is going out with your clinical clinical community health aides and visiting your family. We did that a lot. We kinda used so like an excuse we come out at the you know and we visited the family and showed that they're okay you know that is when you kind of created you start creating bonds with your classmates um i mean i know a lot of you guys always see your classmates you now when you're doing clinical um practicals at school especially those who are started online so this is when you actually start making friends making enemies also right so this is the beginning of something yeah. I do hope that it is much more you get much more experience I did not even though I was at a type 5 clinic but so that's that at the end we there was a written document for the family so that you have to I have mine and if you're interested the last time I said this and I'm gonna get myself in a trouble if you're interested I can see an example of how it's done by just looking at mine it was not perfect i got an a minus for for it for year one practicum so i guess it was okay but in terms of how much i got i can't really say so if you will need it um don't comment check me out on instagram or my email it's also in the description right so moving on to this so after you completed those hours now you make a switch with your colleagues and you go to the hospital now this was such an eye-opener for me because i went on a very disgusting ward oh so anyways yeah um they are more strict in terms of you know the whole objectives in that they hear is properly and your ear panel and then more strict with them some so i implore you guys to just stick to the rules as a first year please do not make any enemies you just ask that so what i did we go there um we show our objectives and then the nurse in charge or the sister on the ward will instruct us as to where we go i don't think we, we don't get more than one patient and you don't necessarily sh you shouldn't necessarily get a patient i don't know if it's changed but you get one patient but it is not total patient care where you provide you know because you're just starting basically what you do for that patient is work alongside a nurse and assist in care for that patient so vital science is a must so guys you need to know and you need to know like the normal ranges for blood um vital signs for the blood pressure temperature respiratory all them something you need to also know how to hand over patients and stuff like that so we get the patient and you know we go to the patient bedside i would say okay i'm student good morning i am student nurse hall and i will be your student nurse for today um i need to get your vital signs done how are you feeling stuff like that you know i don't really get in too deep you know because as me say 
you're just year one you know the skills then we are all to get so i think for you in year one i did like history so it's like history taking so you know ask the patient the name some family information the condition at which they have and basically i do the interview thing that you guys did in class and look in the patient's um dock it and write up a few stuff and things like that in terms of skills i did more hands-on um you know with the whole vital signs i did bed bath um sometimes nurses will allow you to admit some medication but it's not on your list of things to do i don't know if it's changed but i did that um well my advice to you guys is while in the hospital you ask to do a lot of things ask to observe a lot of things and get things out the way the more practice is better for you in my first year i i gave medication injection all on sunday i i was inserted ng tubes i did dressing in year one all on sunday because of the type of person that i am you know let me just put this out there you can teach me a whole lot of things. You can give me a million book theory wise. I'm a sweaty. I'm a pass my test. But the practical side of it is very important. And as nursing, I think it's very it's something that should be prioritized, right? I feel like me a boss is, but yeah. <laughs> so skills that I think is very important for you to get down are start because there's not much for you to do in first year. In terms of skill wise so after you've gotten got your thing aside start this is very important how to put up IV how to put up the drip something may I try sorry may I focus may I try be real we don't know how to put up drip a lot of students in my class never know how to put up drip until like third year third year drip or something we have to put up I mean I don't know why I call it drip right it's <laughs> so but i'm just saying that to keep it real with you guys come on say jamaican to call them something the drip but it's not just drip it could be medication it could be normal saline it could be anything they're getting in but ask how you put it up and them something there it's that's something we are going to do every day so might as well learn i learned to do that in first year so injection I did that also, but it's not on your list. Not at all, not at all. You know, the pharmacology, not at all. Maybe second year, maybe. But <laughs> but if you can get the opportunity to do it, I think they will allow you to do like insulin. Right. And um, um, sad to say, or it's not really sad, but weird to say, change pampers. Um, it's something that you need to learn to do. I don't know if it's something you need to learn to do, but it's not the whole you know like you put a baby on the bed you take up them foods and you wipe it's nothing like that darling there is a technique and if you learn it from now it will save you a whole lot of hardship a whole lot of visual trauma <laughs> right so that's something we are going to do all the while you're going to carry out bedpan all the while so get the practice in that aspect as well also learn how to put on and take off gloves the proper term donning and doffing of gloves <laughs> um right um you can also advocate or ask to see how you do admission and discharge it's a very long and tedious process and if i had done that from first year maybe it wouldn't have been that annoying no i only did that in my third year um also repositioning of patients you will find that a lot of person in the hospital has bed sore and that's because they're not being turned they're not being turned but uh, i'm gonna say a lot of nurses they don't have the time to just be turning patient every two hours and stuff but when there's a nursing student there it makes a difference and just make your presence there anywhere you go in life not just on practicum anywhere you go in life make sure that you make a change you make a difference your presence was felt or something so you're there just do the do you change you reposition the patient you ensure that right you do your thing and then you sign the paper and leave your, your time sheet is something that would be emailed to you 
don't worry but let me tell you it is very important that you get your time sheet signed it's like the most important thing you don't leave without signing your time sheet at all it's something like this you can see right and you just fill that out so you get it signed and you're on your merry way right right so i know a lot of you don't know what the environment is like it was a bit shocker to me as well but it's just like any other workplace don't don't let it don't get that don't be that fearful as time goes by you'll get better if you just follow my steps follow what your lecturers say you'll be fine so i'm just gonna walk through with you the routine after you get up in the morning and you get your stuff together get it together sis and you write your objectives whether you write it in a taxi while you're there write your objective at the end of my eight hour shift i would like to complete the following you show it to whoever and whoever will assign you so put in a note for do at that point so put in a note to say you're just nervous you see the patient said so Are we are gonna just go and do vital signs no communication is key people so you say to your nurse no 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 before we do that remember the first thing you have to do are to make a good impression people check the emergency trolley remember you go there in the morning after you become orientated and yada 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 right you check the emergency trolley you look you say okay atropine is there it is not expired Adrenaline is there, it is not expired. Gloves is on the trolley, not expire. If it is expired, tell the nurse, nurse, atropine is Lasix is expired. Whatever is expired, I can replace it. So on. After that, now, boom, you get a patient. So the nurse said, okay, student nurse, whatever you are assigned to patient one on bed one. You go and you go over there to say, um, Mr. John Brown said so. Now nah, move. Nothing. You know what to do. What to say. Ren. <laughs> and this has happened to the best of us. Do not panic. The very first thing you do, if it is possible, is to get a hold of the patient's docket. You need to know what happened to the patient. Suppose the patient have some form of scabies and you're gone there with your nerves and gone touch up, touch up patient. Right? So you get the patient's docket and you read, okay, John Brown. Do not touch John Brown. <laughs> you see, John Brown, um, maybe he has gangrene, gangrene feet, to the feet, um, spinal injury, right? So that explains why now I move, right? You see what it is wrong with him. Then you go to the nurse, you find out nurse or uh, nurse in charge who is assigned to this cubicle who is assigned to this patient and they say okay it's nurse gray you go to nurse gray and say, nurse gray i am student nurse and it's my first year and i'm assigned to patient in bed number one okay the nurse say can you go ahead and get the vital signs for me please sure and you go ahead you get a little notebook look a small one let me tell you i forget and you write up bp slash respiration slash pulse temperature spo2 all that you write this up in your little book you go to the patient bedside good morning pete john brown i am student nurse so and so i'll be your student nurse for today how are you today and uh, even if the patient not talk you still have to talk and get permission from the patient right right and majority of them will be nicer to student nurses right so don't panic don't panic people you go ahead and you put on the cuff and you sh you know you know how to do vital signs and so on you write the reading in your book you bring it back to the nurse and say i'll finish and she will show you where there's some bedside charts where you put it in with the time you did it and all of that you go back to the patient you just do the vital signs and leave Remember, you know, you're practicing your skills and how to do, you know, your whole assessment. I don't know if you are supposed to do head-to-toe assessment, but if you are, this is the weird time that you will do so. And if you're in first year, you know, history taking, you just sit to the patient 
um i would like to ask you a few questions please note that these questions will be confidential meaning you're not going to Meaning you're not going to spread it to nobody else and so on and so forth you do your thing. If you see that your patient is uncomfortable in the bed, Mr. John Brown, are you okay? Can I reposition you? Can I, right? You ask the patient, have you gotten breakfast yet? If you see the breakfast coming in, you go ahead and you get the breakfast to the patient. And before you do that, if the patient mouth won't clean up and all of them can get up and brush them teeth to ensure that mouth care is done. Not every patient will have a toothbrush and toothpaste. So what you can do, you can use a tongue depressor and um, cotton and uh, they have more wash. But if not, you can just use the hydrogen peroxide. And you clean up the patient mouth and pull the even little Vaseline on their lip, but you know, and every nobody wants to eat and on a dirty mouth, right? Do the mouth care, ensure that the bed and the bedside is that's your duty as a student nurse, and then you give them them breakfast and stuff. And I don't recall you doing anything else for the rest of the day, unless so your duty will just be to take care of the patient, my the minor way, ensuring that they're okay. Ask the nurse if the nurse needs help with anything. If you see the nurse going to the patient bedside, you go with the nurse. If you see a doctor going to the patient bedside, you go with the doctor and listen in. If you see the nurse bringing medication, you say, yes, ask the nurse, what medication is that? You write it down in your book. I'm just that you do. And then you sign the paper, you leave and you go home. Now, in terms of exam, my first year exam, I did not do my exam on the ward. I do my exam in class. We did vital signs. We did bed making, no, I don't remember, but we, and, oh yes, we do hand washing, vital signs, and something else, history taking, so there's a paper that you just basically read from and ask the person the question, that's all, that's all you did for first year exam, so that's all you need to know people, don't panic if there's any questions you have, feel free to message me on Instagram now guys so much again for watching i know it's a lengthy one but i do hope that you were able to get something from it and i wish you guys an awesome semester if you need help with anything you can reach out to me and i wish you all the best don't forget to leave a like leave a comment and just share the video and don't forget to subscribe if you've already subscribed just check because as i mentioned I lost the last of you guys the other day. Just check again, resubscribe, and welcome back to the family. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.